Hey, it's Jeff with Master Medics here. Thank you so much for checking out this quick little video. We're gonna be talking about ventilation and perfusion ratios and how pathology can alter that within the body itself. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out in the comments. We'll be happy to chat there. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button so that way you get notifications for all of our new videos and that way you can start to take yourself from that struggling EMT paramedic student to that A-level student that you want to be. Ventilation and perfusion ratios. Now, this is not a uh, this is a this is a complex con or uh, thing. So, I want you guys to understand that you may have to watch this a couple times to truly grasp the nature of what we're talking about here. But it will be important when you start talking about pathology. And I'm going to try and really tie it well into that, so that way it really clicks immediately. But again, it may take a couple shots of just kind of grasping the knowledge of it because it is a new concept that most people haven't really talked about okay so we know that the heart pumps its blood through the pulmonary artery okay pumps blood i'll get rid of the black okay we'll do uh blue so we know that it's pumping blood to from the pulmonary arteries okay into the lungs themselves well we know that we have also know that we have three lobes within our lung okay we have um, if I was going to cut into three, like so, okay, we have our our level one, two, and three lobes of this lung, and so that means that when we bring out a pulmonary artery's vessel, we're going to have a branch that's going to go to the apex, it's going to go to the middle, and we have another branch that's going to go to the base of the lung. Okay, so we're going to have three different branches going to three different areas of this particular lung. Okay, now this being said, something interesting is going to happen here is that we're actually going to have more blood that's going to go to the bases than we do to the apex of the lung. Why do you think that is? <coughs> Why do you think we have more blood that goes to the base of the lung? as opposed to the apex. Sandra and Bryce are on the right track. The reason we have more blood that goes to the base as opposed to the apex of the lung when we're standing upright is gravity. Okay, so we have, which means, and so when we have more blood that's going down there, it means that we actually have an increase in perfusion happening here. It means more blood is going there, which means that we have more ability for perfusion in the bases of the lungs as opposed to the apex, simply because of gravity and the fact that we sit upright and we stand upright. Okay, so that gravity causes more blood to go down here. Okay, now that's the first part. It means that we have more blood flow down here, which is the perfusion side. Okay, and perfusion is often referred to as Q. Okay, and ventilation, don't ask me why, is V, <laughs> VQ. And so when we talk about VQ mismatches, we're talking about vent ventilation perfusion mismatches. Okay, and that's what this VQ ratio is. Okay, so that's gravity part. That's the perfusion side here. Okay. We also have better ventilation in our alveoli uh, within the base of the lung. Why is that? That's a great question. I'm just going to change the color just so I can separate the difference between ventilation and perfusion. Okay, We have that perfusion side, which is the gravity we know is coming more to the bases than we are the apexes. Okay, We also have more ventilation in the bases. Why? Well, it's because our alveolus are quite large in the apex, okay, and actually quite naturally small in the bases. Now you might be thinking, well, wouldn't that mean that if we have bigger alveolus in the apexes, wouldn't they get better ventilation? Uh, actually, no. And the reason being is that the smaller your alveolus is, the more opportunity it has to expand during inspiration. And the more it expands during inspiration, the more radical change of pressure, which means that more air can allow can get in there and allow for more perfusion because the more of expands the least expansion the less chance perfusion can occur okay so truth be told is that we get more of our perfusion and our ventilation out of the basis of our lungs as opposed to the apex because of these two things gravity and the size of the alveolus okay so why is this important 
is because we actually have particular pieces that could change when we have pathology. And the ratio, okay, is typically, us right now, is 0 0.8, meaning that for with every breath we take, we use about 80% of the ventilation, okay? 80% of that air is used for perfusion, okay? So we do have a lot of wasted perfusion. We do have a lot of wasted air uh, simply because we just cannot use it up total, like totally. It's impossible because we, in particularly the base of the lungs, the reason we have so many small little alveoli is because of how much perfusion comes down here. And there's so much blood that we need more small, very efficient alveoli in order to perfuse and ventilate properly. Okay. Without it, we would miss all that blood. Okay, that's trying to go by and get oxygenated. And we still do miss some of it. And that's why we have a perfusion ratio of below one. It's at 8% because we just don't have enough time and enough efficiency in order to perfuse all the red blood cells that come by through the lungs at its first pass. Okay, so that's the first part. Now let's get into that second piece of this. Okay, that's where I want to tie it in here. So I've got an alveoli and the vessel that is connected to it. Okay, that's what I'm kind of trying to show here. Okay, so where does ventilation ratios really come into play from a practitioner standpoint? Well, it's when it gets altered. So for example, I think I'm on red, so I got to change that because the whole thing is red. <laughs> uh, let's go to blue. That'll be easy to see. So for example, if you had pneumonia, okay. If you had pneumonia, you would have a decrease in ventilation due to the fact that we have no ability to get air through all this consolidation. So you would have a decrease in your ventilation perfusion ratio. Or if you had chronic bronchitis, okay, or COPD, where you had a damaging of the bronchioles. Okay, you have emphysema, which is damaging the bronchioles, or if you had chronic bronchitis, which is excessive mucus produ production on the bronchioles, you would have a decrease in ventilation because you couldn't get as much air and oxygen into the alveoli to be perfused. Okay, which means that you would have a decrease in your ventilation perfusion ratio. On the other side of that, it goes, okay, is there ever a chance where perfusion can be altered? Yes. And if you guys were part of our pulmonary embolism class, you would already be thinking about this. So if we get a pulmonary embolism where we get a clot in pulmonary circulation and we can no longer get blood past there, then we have a decrease in perfusion. Even if we have great ventilation, we can get all the oxygen we want into that alveoli. It doesn't matter if we can't get blood past that uh, alveoli to get perfused. And so all the alveoli that are connected to this pulmonary circulation, depending on where that, um, where that vessel is blocked, that essentially becomes dead space. Okay, that no longer can be used for ventilation and perfusion, which completely alters our ventilation perfusion ratios. So we talk about ventilation perfusion perfusion mismatch a lot in pulmonary embolism. It's the, one of the only ones that's really going to alter perfusion side of the equation by dropping that mismatch, but it's not the only one. Things like, like I said, COPD, things like pneumonias, all can cause a decrease in ventilation, which decreases our ventilation perfusion ratio. But this one in particular is gonna completely alter it because no blood is able to get past there, which completely changes our ability to perfuse, which completely mismatches our ventilation perfusion.